Hello, hello everyone. Welcome to a brand new series on the channel with a brand new game for the channel, Star Wars Empire at War. We are, of course, playing with the Fall of the Republic mod, an absolutely brilliant mod, uh, which really changes up the game quite heavily. Uh, we're going to go straight over to setting up our Galactic Conquest, which we will, of course, be playing as the Confederacy of Independent Systems. We're going for a standard uh, progressive map on the medium galactic size. Um, so that means we'll be progressing through eras in a sandbox style of uh, game. We're going to, however, bump up to um, starting era three. And that means we're in 21 years before the Battle of Yavin, right in the middle of the Clone Wars. And this is just uh, going to determine what's available to us, uh, what heroes and starting units we do have at the beginning of the game, and their placements across the galaxy. Um, so, there's not much more to say in this particular bit. We'll run into things in more detail as we come across them within the game. Let's waste no more time and get going for what I hope to be another exciting series for the channel here. Righty then, so as the game is loaded in and giving us the briefing at the top left over here, we can see that we're having a 6,500 income over here. We're on cycle one, of course. It is a real-time strategy game, so we are gonna pause to run down a few things. We have 10,000 credits in the bank, and we have a pop cap of 900 out of uh, 1,200 or so um, total. We, of course, as the CIS, do have some allies to look at, which we will be able to uh, absorb later in the game. We'll run through that as we come down to it. However, as our own faction, we are split um, in the north and south regions of the galaxy, as we can see at a glance on the uh, minimap over here. I'm gonna turn on all the things first so that we do get a uh, fairly detailed look at a quick glance for every planet here. We have this uh, core sector over here with Raxus Secundus and Raxus Prime. Raxus Secundus appears to be our galactic capital. We do have a rather high credit income as provided by the CIS Senate. Uh, I don't think we need this ion cannon, so we're going to sell that for a thousand credits immediately. And we're also going to bump up our own credit income here by building the tax collection agency here. That will reduce our total influence by two over the planet, and that's rather important. However, we can get away with that at the moment because our current influence is nine, and that's out of ten. Once our influence gets to three or below, there will be an increased chance of revolt on the planet. And that influence is taken planet per planet, so that's absolutely fine. As long as we keep it above three, we're all safe across the board there. No risk of revolt or rebellion there. I'm just going to get rid of this flashing message. We'll be looking at that later on as well. And we are going to just make sure we bring our fleets together over here. We have Admiral Trench, Count Dooku. We have Grievous in the top as well as our Dark Jedi over here. I'm gonna pause once again very quickly. We have um, our uh, strategic droid over here, which is uh, split off from the rest of our planets over here. So we're gonna be looking at taking Renvar and Belderon to begin with, I think, in this Northern Hemisphere. Could leave Mon Calamari for the minute, although that is a capital ship tier shipyard over there, as denoted by the number four. The shields are uh, indicating how well defended it is, though. So I might want to build up there uh, to begin with. And we're going to try linking Grievous and uh, Sereno and Yavin 4 over towards uh, this uh, part of our northern hemisphere as well. With our, which uh, is the Commerce Guild, the specific uh, alliance territory over here, we can pay a small fee to pass through this area. Uh, we will be able to grab this passively as time goes on though, so there's no point in invading. Gonna look down south though, and we have Viceroy Gunray over here. We're gonna be using him uh, very frequently because he does reduce all of our construction costs by 30% where he is present. We also have Dirge and Asajj Ventress down here as well as Ort O over here as a fleet commander. The goal is going to be to try and abandon Umbara and Onderon over here and perhaps Call of Four, but we are going to want to link up with those uh, so that we do save our hero over here because when heroes die in this mod, they do die outright forever. 
apart from a few exceptions, and we'll get onto that later on as well. We're also going to try and link up Geonosis, which is isolated apart from a couple um, techno union buffers over here in Hypora and Nelvan. Uh, we need Geonosis to stay ours because it's a capital ship or dreadnought shipyard there with a lot of build slots and we have most of our uh, buildings over here for production do have some turbo laser defenses we're going to leave that there until we do link up and we will want to think about expanding on that so i think the name of the game is get to power for today um see if the republic do take pantora which is held by i believe here yeah, the uh, trade federation which is another one of our allies over here so we're going to get started and start moving our fleets over here towards Slusvan to just get some working fleets going over here. We're also going to try and defend Yagdor. We're going to build an ion cannon over here uh, because the enemy could use Bestine as a gateway to our forces. We could try and take Bestine to block that off and actually reinforce uh, Devron and probably sacrifice new plimps over there because that's uh, isolated within Republic territory as outlined by the red territories there. So you might want to think about that a little harder. Enemy might be trying to uh, take Tinna and Karima, which we might want to sacrifice later on, just so that we can reinforce our cores and uh, focus on them. Uh, we are going to build, I think, some B2 Bastroids, some supers, and we're going to build, I think, some... Uh, AATs here to begin with and then we'll start moving the Viceroy about to get some more use out of his discount. Have already been given the story Rise of Mandalore so this is a mission to just choose who to support on Mandalore when we get up to 8 influence on there. We can either support the Mandalore the Resurrector for certain uh, associated heroes or we can support Pre Vizsla and the Death Watch and I think we're going to go for the Death Watch when that opportunity arises. So we're also going to build some cram droids here as well as a heavy factory. We're going to come down here. That should actually increase our influence in Tosa on Tybrim which is very useful as well as our industry and infrastructure points over here. We're going to build a light factory over here and a mining facility because we can on Mustafar, that's very useful indeed. I'm going to double check exactly what we have as a fleet over here. I wouldn't mind some more carriers actually. So we're going to build a couple light carriers and a munificent there. I'm going to do a munificent there as well as well as a caption or so captor, heavy munitions carry there for more fighters. Going to go to the ground here, pause very quickly once again and build on a uh, best pin another mining facility for more income there. And it does appear we actually have an orbital trade hub. Uh, trade routes are highlighted for newer players by the more flashing star lanes which also provide increased movement as well as income. So it's important to think about those as well as choke points uh, when building up. I think we're also going to, we have one more defensive slot up here, so later on when we do have money, because we've uh, rinsed through that quite quickly already, uh, we will think about uh, building that up for more influence. But uh, how are we doing over here? We want to get a battle going, don't we? Let's uh, pause very quickly. I think Belderon, we're not going to scout that out. That should be fine to take straight away. So we're going to get our Munifex frigate to come in first as a scouting ship. Oh, before we move that, we've been given another mission, which is capture Ethor for a recusant class dreadnought. And we only get these dreadnoughts through missions. So that's absolutely brilliant. Completing it will also increase our influence with the commerce guild by five, giving us planets and the uh, units associated with that planet. And that's excellent. The other way we can uh, increase our influence with uh, these planets uh, and uh, alliances is by uh, researching certain technologies. So that's around Dathmir, so that's just out of the way. How long do we have to do that? We have until cycle 12, so we're going to have to rush through over there, I think. That's quite the way out there, it's quite the way out indeed. But we are going to start this uh, space battle above Belderon, I think, to begin with. and that. Should be very nice indeed. What exactly do they have over that? Nothing too great, or well, they do have an invincible class of dreadnoughts, so that's something to think about. So, starting with our moon effects as a scout, that should give us some line of sight, and it certainly does what the enemy looks like over here. Apart from this uh, dreadnoughts 
fairly light defences. We have a light uh, platform over here in front of their main star base. So we're going to bring in Admiral Trench with his hero over here. And that is excellent. And then we're going to pause. And we're going to bring in everything else at once, which I should have thought about before, perhaps. Just a few of these uh, destroyers. A couple munificents at the back. We're going to bring in some point defence uh, diamonds over here. And we are going to bring in the uh, munitions carrier to bring in some more fighters, of course. We don't get a lot of fighters um, already and such with these dreadnoughts, so it's important to bring that in. And we are going to build up a wolf pack of missile frigates on this flank. Bring them at the back to begin with. And I think we can just uh, afford to bring the rest of our dreadnoughts on this mute effects over here. And press play to let them come in. An absolute spectacle seeing those all burst in at once. We're going to absolutely focus with our destroyers and such on to the heavy capital ship over here. We're going to bring our diamonds a little for more further forward. Actually, I think we take uh, these two to fire on the acclimator as well as our uh, mun munificence over here. I'm going to be struggling to say that a lot. <laughs> We're going to actually fire onto this, I believe it's a pelter support ship, which can repair enemies. So you can see it's happening over there, but once we've destroyed hard points on the ship, they won't be coming back despite having uh, repairs over there. And this is falling very heavily because of our concentrated fire. It looks like these are moving forwards rather than targeting, which is unlucky. We don't want those to go down too quickly. Managed to destroy the Pelter, which is excellent. Do we have any more Corvettes and Frigates to look out for? No, we don't. At the moment, we do have lots of fighters coming in, so we're going to get our uh, fighters onto them, as well as move up our diamonds to figure out those. Have destroyed their capital, so uh, ours should not have much of a bar to entry towards their main base and hangars over here. In fact, they are retreating, so that's a very easy victory already. We're going to leave them to retreat, I think. Uh, so we don't risk any more damage ourselves. We just let uh, the fighters do their thing over here. And there they go. Absolutely brilliant. Very easy first victory as it should have been there. I'll just watch that get destroyed. Absolutely brilliant. So that's opened the way for a large ground assault now. We're just going to scout that out with a probe droid first, I think, so that we can prepare a more targeted um, approach to that. In fact, we have been given our credits. This is uh, not deducting any upkeep, this total income, which is why we don't see a full 7.8 thousand already. So we're going to build a probe droid and have a look at exactly what we do have in this area. Uh, some basic infantry, have Darth, or oh, Count Dooku rather, say Darth Aranus. But um, AATs and basic infantry once again, Hellfires and infantry, and pretty much the same over there. Really, that is enough to take Belder in, but I want to uh, just help out a tad there. We're going to get, we don't have any production buildings on Mintui, which is rather interesting. Then we're going to get some more AATs here, a couple more super battle droids here, and that should be good enough. We do have that probe droid up now. See what exactly is on here. I'll pause to really take that in. So we can see an A5 Juggernaut already. That is an anti infantry, um, and that's somewhat anti air, in fact. It does have bonuses against that. But it's mostly a troop transport. We do see some ACPTs for anti infantry, and a lot of walkers coming out of this light factory as a garrison. And everything is, of course, concentrated in one area with the power generator in advance there. So that should be fairly straightforward as long as we get rid of that A5 Juggernaut fairly quickly. So we will bring in some vehicles of our own when we're ready there. However, we're going to go straight down here. And I think we're going to uh, commence a space battle over Utapau using pretty much the same tactics as that previous battle we have just fought. I'm going to take this uh, munitions carrier over first as well, though, and just bring that around so they do have extra uh, stuff over there to use. I'm going to get this... Uh, over here, because that helps with our capital ships, so that'll be useful. And that should be good. Over, just make sure we are moving in with that moon effects first. Let's go straight away. In fact, Utspa has fallen to the Republic, so they might have a bit of a fleet over there. They do, in fact, have some fleets over there, but we can see the largest ship they have is an Acclimator, I imagine, assault. So let's get straight in. So, what exactly does the enemy have? Not loads and loads. There's a lot of uh, corvettes and frigates here, so we're going to have to worry about those a tad. We do have some dreadnought heavy cruisers, and they will take on our munificence and such fairly easily. So what we're going to do is actually come from their side a tad. We'll pull back so we are at range. 
bring in our uh, capitals here. We'll bring in a few of these uh, destroyers as well. We'll bring in our carriers towards the back, but we'll bring in a lot of them, as well as these uh, munitions carriers, I think. But what we're going to do is also pinch them a tad with these Omnis, bring in two of those, which can help out our Munifexes here and repair those, because these Omnis do act as uh, fleet tenders and can repair us. I think we're also going to bring in a couple more munificence in this area as well and in where we were. Let's cancel that for the minute and bring in what we have. Oh, what's come around the back? I thought there over there. Not to worry, a bit of a misclick, but it shouldn't hurt too much there. Really shouldn't hurt too much there. It is a bit funny. So uh, we also have some more munitions carries. Going to bring those in at the back here. Going to fire onto the acclimators over here to begin with very quickly. Focus fire there, and we'll focus on this acclimator over here with our frigates. Shouldn't have a problem there. We're coming around the back here as well. It looks like we're moving rather than aiming here. It might just be limited range with our cannons and such. Bring the carriers over for some point defense over here. How are we doing? We're losing some a lot of damage actually onto this uh, munificent over here, which is rather a shame. We have downed two acclimators already, which is excellent, as we bloody should do. And we're going to focus this one over here. Guess our captors onto this pelter to stop them from actually repairing themselves. Taking a fair bit of damage, but nothing too horrible here. We're going to focus on this Corvette here. Really, there we go. Take that down. Take down the Pelter as well. And actually, the Munificent over here on the flank isn't doing too bad. Let's try and pull this one back. Fire onto any extras over here. We're really ripping through, actually, their Acclimators and their Dreadnoughts over here, which is excellent. You can see the firepower really helping there. They've deployed a um, interdiction mine over here, which means we can't retreat while that is active, but we certainly don't need to retreat. And we have saved our Munificent here as well, which is absolutely brilliant. So it looks like we've actually walked over that pretty well, and that is a very swift victory over as quickly as it started. Did we take any losses though? Let's have a look. Uh, we did lose a hard cell tender, but that's really not a problem. Uh, we can certainly live with that over all of these enemy losses, and that's brilliant. We have seen, however, they've taken Pantora as well from our um, allies there, but not to worry, that does mean we can capture that more directly. So what do we actually have over here? I think we're going to just bring over some land units towards uh, Mustafa and Bespin. Bring these over here from Tyburn as well. Again, this should be enough to take uh, Usa Power by itself, but we are going to scout this out very quickly. What do we actually have? A lot of infantry, a lot of crab droids actually, that's very good. There's some Octoptaras for some very heavy anti-vehicle. So we're going to rush on over to Usa Power before there's any real defence over there, I think. But we'll scout it out just to double check what's there first. And in fact, they do have some tanks, but they have no buildings, so that's rather interesting. They do actually have a piece of artillery there. Um, so I think we're going to try and rush that down with some crabs might be the uh, strategy here. The only real major threat is this uh, TX-130 company. So we're going to make sure that we're just starting off, I think with some B2s to begin with. So they're always useful and we will instantly invade Utapal there. And that will be the first uh, planet taken under our control from the enemy. So we're going to build, I think, a support forward base when we do get the chance there. We're going to start with quite a few crab droids, I think, because they do have some staying power. Um, I think we're going to start with some AATs for that anti-vehicle that's needed. We do have an artillery piece of our own, but I don't want to start with that just yet. Um, and I think what we'll do is we will start some small supers as well. Get that support field base going. And with our crabs, we're actually going to send them off uh, by themselves to this uh, more northern capture point over here so that we do free up some more popcat for reinforcements. We'll capture these two build pads so we can get some defensive turrets going. And we'll start moving southerly with the rest of our infantry and such over here. So B2s are excellent infantry in my book because they do have some durability as well as the wrist rockets. 
um, to help out our AATs, which are running off by themselves at the moment. We don't want that. And one reason for bringing in the uh, support field base is so that we do get some repair droids to further help out our tanks over here because they are currently limited. I'm going to sprint them over to uh, this particular point over here and we are going to take the capture build pad. And we'll take this one as well. We've secured a build and we have secured the landing zone now as well actually. So, I'm going to get an anti-vehicle turret up there. And I think we're actually going to go for more crab droids up here, as well as some dwarf spider droids to provide some light anti-vehicle there. And they're going to flank up round to the north sector. And we finally have some uh, interference on the southern sector. We can see these shots coming down from the enemy's artillery there. And so we need to get rid of any spotting, and that should be the case now. But they do actually have some infantry about. We can see the artillery over here, so we're going to have to rush that as quickly as possible. Because that will absolutely demolish our push down here. Yeah, you can see it's taking on some AATs already. We're going to have to zoom those across as quickly as possible, because it will be very uh, vulnerable to absolutely everything. But we do need to get in range, of course. It has taken down two AATs already. Not good. I was hoping to bump into that with our crab droids, really, but it is now down. And that'll free us up down here. Let's try and capture this point over here. See an absolute army of uh, spiders and crabs over here. That looks rather creepy, to be honest. All of these things, absolutely beautiful units. Absolutely beautiful. We're going to start. We have. Uh, haven't quite lost the AATs just yet, but they are integral to our push. We need to get rid of these infantry units. We should be fine. And we have actually engaged the main enemy tanks out to the north over here. That's going to be a bit of a bother. We're going to need to get rid of these uh, ACRTs uh, so that we can protect our crabs and dwarf spider droids a little bit better. Where are the dwarf spider droids? We need to focus on the enemy tanks very, very quickly because they are shielded. So that will regenerate over time if we don't do the damage very quickly. Which does appear we are doing. We're going to take some rather nasty losses. That's one down. We do need to actually build up a bit of a base over here, another support group over here. But this should be the remainder of the enemy resistance in this area. We're going to lose, or take a lot of damage though in the process. Oh, the camera flipping out there a bit. Looks like they're mostly down, so we're just moving our crab droids to deal with the speeders especially. Focus over here, get onto the main battle droid there. And that was rather nasty. I think what we're going to do is we're going to try and take the opportunity to heal up here. They do actually have a base uh, now by the looks of things. And the time it's taken for us to get on over uh, with our invasion. Get on to this because it is wrecking us. In fact, what we can do is probably uh, bombard or even... Um, let's just get these on at the moment. Bombard or start a bombing run. What we'll do is we will heal up though, we have built a back to tank to heal up our infantry, which all of this does classify us. And yeah, we'll move in and then uh, get a bombing run off, I think. Should be fine to push in like this. Have some reinforcements down here. We have repaired the AAT, but I think the AAT can actually uh, sit this one out so we don't lose the whole squadron at the end of the battle. Got some Art Trooper Phase 2s over here, rather nasty stuff indeed. They are going to take a lot of damage to the crab droids rather a lot. But we do have uh, superiority in numbers there. What if we come across a back to tank over here? That's all good. I think what we're going to do is rush on up to the building over here if we can and get a bombing run in. Stand up here so the terrain's not an issue. Get a bombing run in here. Come over to the generator. Okay, and with that building down, they will no longer get any garrisons out, but we're pushing in a little too hard for my liking here. We have ignored that while watching the bombing run. Get out to bring in some support with the crab droids. The enemy is now retreating, so we have won that battle. As we bloody well should have done. Let's just get rid of this so that it doesn't manage to retreat and save it for another day. Did lose one platoon of B2s, interestingly enough, but uh, I think... Uh, 
an acceptable loss there. Pull back anything we don't need and we'll start building a minor base there with our um, agency buildings and such, government buildings. So what else are we looking at in the north? Do we have everything ready for an invasion of Belderum? It certainly should do. Do we start building anything more? We do have some more B2s. We have an AAT, some more AATs. So that should be fine, really, to take on Belderon. We will, of course, be bringing in Count Dooku to help us in the fight to provide some command for us. Uh, we don't need to bring anything here, I don't think. Let's bring that on over. Get above the planet and make sure we know what is going to uh, land first. And I think that'll just be some uh, marine B ones actually, because they do have some minor AV capabilities. So once again, we're going to land. I think we're going to start with uh, Master Dooku. Going to land with some AATs, some Spider Walkers, and some B twos for some diversity. And we're going to bring up another support group as well to provide some mobile repairs for our tanks. Now, we do have a victory capture point over here, which means if we do take that, we'll get an instant victory, despite not having to take their base and such. So we don't necessarily need to push the base, just need to take that victory condition. So we're going to push straight towards that. We're going to go north for this capture point. We're going to ignore this one, and that should be fine by itself. We're going to move over the B1s and B2s to form an infantry front line, as well as Count Dooku, who can self-heal and possibly defect and absorb blast of fire, so it's absolutely fine with that. We're going to pull to the back with our vehicles, which are lightly armoured, especially the spider walkers. Don't currently have any uh, support droids, but we're going to push up despite that. So they shall spawn out fairly soon from here. And we will, of course, capture any build pads along the way. This is our pair droid coming out, so we'll keep them in the back line with our walkers and vehicles. And I hope we don't instantly run into this uh, enemy juggernaut, so we'll pull back a tad, form up into a decent group just before the uh, command post over here. Yeah, there we go. You can see some clones about, and actually some walkers, so let's focus over there, get Dooku on. There's an ACRT that will outrun us if given the chance. That's not a problem though, and that has freed up the capture point over here. So, what do we want to bring in now? I think we bring in some more B2s and AATs for now. We can see some clones coming in. Push up a tad. Yeah, some ATPTs coming in there, so that's going to be a problem for our infantry. But our B2s do have some wrist rockets available. Let's push up Count Dooku to deal with the enemy infantry coming in. Should be able to wipe those out fairly easily, especially with support. And he does have his force lightning ability there. Let's push on up. Try and maintain some cohesion there. He's got an ACRC there to deal with. And that is down, excellent. Right, let's support Dooku. He can't do everything by himself. In fact, he does need to watch out to destroy this uh, Taurus over here, which is an anti-vehicle type turret. We do have some ACPTs coming in. Let's focus on those with our um, tanks. Our speed are coming in. Let's move up with uh, the bulk of our infantry and some spiders for now. We'll focus these ACPTs, which are going to damage Count Dooku quite a bit. Let's get our B2s onto the anti-vehicle turret before that starts hurting our own spiders. Do see a TX-130 coming in, so we could just uh, focus a few things on that. It's measured is what this needs to be. Looks like the enemy's coming in for the south here, actually. Let's get a bombing run out on that, if possible. And that will deal with uh, the bulk of the enemy quite easily there. Thank God for that. So I think we're just going to run straight onto this, uh, this capture point over here. Keeping these in place with everything over here for the bombing run. Let's try and push up a turn to keep that in place a bit better. Is that going to miss? Better not bloody miss. That has missed the juggernauts, unfortunately. So that will be coming up. So we're going to protect our flank with the AATs. Get just a few units of infantry, I think, onto the capture point. Bring Dooku down. He has self-healed. 
Where is the repair droid unit? It's over here. Let's bring the spiders down to help with that. We should be fine to catch her, so we're just going to hold on now. Doesn't matter if we lose this, we do also hold this command post. That's absolutely fine. So that will take some time. That's all good. As long as we hold it, of course. I think what we'll do is we will build a factor healing station here for survivability. We do see the Juggernaut coming in, so we're going to rush that with our AATs, I think. Just move these down to uh, stop blocking the path. And that should go down fairly easily there. It will trample our infantry given the time, though. Given the opportunity, but it is now down, and that is excellent. So I think we're all safe here. Just need to get rid of these speeders, I think. And that's all good. So we're going to bring this unit back to the repair droids. Yeah, look at that. The AAT is doing an amazing job. Let's switch to uh, anti-infantry rockets there. Deal with this unit. That's absolutely wipe them out. That's brilliant. No need to push into their main base. I think we've almost taken this victory point. It's nearly there. You can see the progress with the flag going. Can forget these. These are completely expendable units coming out of the field base there. And that would be very easy indeed. Let's just uh, pull back a tab. These might have some AV. Ah, it's just a simple. Uh, oh, there's a rocket coming out there. Bring in our supers to deal with that. But we've captured the victory point. And that is excellent. Very nice second victory there. Two planets under our grip now. No real losses on our side either for that, so that's brilliant. And that looks like that has secured another trade lane. Could build the basic structures there and decide what we want to do with it later on. It's only a light frigate base available there, so this might be more of a uh, uh, economic hub. Mm, what do we want to do then? Might want to uh, capture Renovar, but it's not going to provide any real um, money bonuses as there are economic bonuses. But that has uh, given us access to Quell. Might want to take uh, Maridon so that we can link up with the Avid Four a little bit easier. So that's probably next on the cards as well as uh, Argonar there, or even Sally Kamai. But I think we're going to focus on Pantora next as uh, the next base. So we're going to scout that out very quickly. No point going in blind. Need one more piece on Sullust over here. We might want this. That's only going to help the dwarf spider droids. I don't know, it's going to help actually the diamond cruiser. I'm not so worried about that. Quite cheap anyway. We have another mission to stockpile 20,000 credits. That's not going to happen anytime soon uh, because I do want to keep spending. We can certainly give it a go. That's only going to be oh, one more cycle maybe actually if we're quite lucky. But we do have until cycle 16 to do that. We get an auxiliar, we get two pursuit destroyers. They're not so bad actually. And we want uh, the influence of the uh, Trade Federation as well. Do seem to think about taking Ethor. Let's go for Pantora though for now. Hmm. Do have a good amount of influence over here actually. What have we got on Pantora? Nothing? We really have nothing? Okay, well let's run straight over and take that while we can, I think. We will have. Oh, it looks like they've got a base now. Yeah, they do have a uh, star base over here, but that's really not a problem. And a very nice space victory in D. So that has cleared the way for a land invasion. And that's actually gone into the same slot as our uh, space stuff. But there's nothing there, so it shouldn't be a problem. Might be able to also resolve that actually very quickly. Yeah, we lost some dwarf spiders. Why well, should never also resolve in this game, but not to worry. Let's make sure Ooh, we have a... 
Oh, we've done that. Excellent. That was very, very quickly. So it's just a one cycle that went through. So we have been given some auxiliary pursuit destroyers on Umbara. We should have taken a trade federation planet as well, but it's not going to tell us exactly what. So we're just going to spend the time to uh, sort this mess out. Because that should not have happened. Got some spiders here, because otherwise they will turn up in our space battles as uh, transports. We certainly don't want that. So I think for Pantor, I might actually build an ion cannon and some defences. Um, so where is Umbara? We have the ships over here. So that's going to build up a little bit of defence there. That will destroy some uh, frigates and such for us. I'm not entirely sure which planets we did get out of that uh, mission though, because we will have got one or two. I'm sure it'll pop up later and we might just end up losing it. <laughs> so I think time for one more battle and I think we're going to try and do a space battle over Ryloth. So having said that, one more probe droid. I'm going to build a frigate shipyard here and a defence station. I think we certainly want to build actually a barracks and a light factory at least over here. Might want to build this uh, Techno Union office as well, because that's a lot of uh, units that's going to help out. And across the galaxy as well. Make sure we're not completely idle over here. What can we build? What can we build? Let's go for a light factory here. And a. We don't really need the frigate's uh, shipyard at the moment, I don't think, over here. Let's uh, compound our stuff over here. Build more barracks and I think a heavy factory for now over here. And let's go back down here, see exactly what's on Ryloth. Not too much by the looks of it. In fact, a mining facility. So it's going to be a lot of money coming off of Ryloth. And again, quite a simple um, invasion over here. The power generator's here, but don't need to worry too much about that. It's going to be a lot of troopers over here. It's a very infantry heavy invasion by the looks of things. So, uh, that just means we need to pull our things together again, bring all the things over, and we'll be fine with that. And while they're collecting, we will rush on over with our fleet. So, same thing again for this battle, but there is only a Corellian gunship about to defend as a standing fleet, so it's going to be very, very easy indeed. No need to take too much time about this, really. Just make sure we do have some decent ships about for protection and such. We're going to bring some of these mune effectors over to deal with any extra gunships and such they may have. Bring our munificent sounds on the flank, do like doing that, and bring our munitions carriers over here as well, I think. Don't need to bring in everything. Although overkill is the best kill, we're going to focus that over here. We're going to move up a tad so we do get into range. Tell our fighters to get in already. Yeah, we need to focus on these larger ships coming in completely. Get rid of these point defense protectors over here with our mute effects. Should be very easy to do so. We're moving too far with these. I do like to take a movement order over attack for some reason. But that's all good. I think we're certainly walking over the enemy here. Just make sure we're dealing with these uh, ships so we do remove their point defense have a lot of fighter superiority as well, actually. Gets these onto the larger ships. Just micro things a tad, so they're all safe there. Might have moved up a tad too much with uh, those carriers, but it's really not too much of a problem at the moment. Enemy doesn't have too much to uh, contend with. So we could start focusing on their base, and they are in fact retreating. So that's all good. That's brilliant. We've seen a lot of retreats already today. And nothing shall survive. And there you go. Absolutely brilliant. Absolutely brilliant indeed. And there we go. That has opened up the space over Ryloth for an invasion. And then we can link up with Geonosis. And that is an excellent uh, economic base as well onto the south of... Uh, the galaxy over here. We want to think about taking Prey Sitlin and Naboo later on, I think.
But that is unfortunately all we have time for today, ladies and gentlemen. That's about 10, getting on 11 cycles, and we have taken a good few planets already today with a good few fights and battles on hand there. So that is going to be the end for today's episode. Thank you to everyone who has come in to join the new exciting series for the channel. I do appreciate it very much, and I hope to see you in future episodes. Please do leave your feedback as ever in the comments section below. But as ever, I shall see you in the future. May all of your nights and days be auspicious.